Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today our topic is still related to your plan to study in Canada. So, ano yung pag-uusapin natin ngayon? So, bigyan ko kayo ng uh, uh, idea what you should know when you're planning to study in Canada. So, medyo mahaba yung topic. So, abangan niyo po yung next video for other uh, things na dapat nung uh, malaman before planning to study in Canada. So, one thing na i-discuss natin today is yung pagpa-plan. So, make a plan for your uh, plan to study in Canada. So, ano ba yun? Masyado kasi malawak ang planning eh. Planning stage is yun yung pinakamahirap. Kasi lahat ng aspect nandoon. So, yung una natin itatakal is yung finance, yung i-assess yung financial capability nyo to to study in Canada. So, tanongin nyo yung sarili nyo. Ready na ba kayo to move to to other country or to Canada to study? Pa, uh, financial, financial stable na ba kayo? So, make a list of things na dapat nyo i-assess. So, number one, so, in terms of financial capability, is meron ba kayong enough ng funds or money in your bank account na magagamit nyo pag tumira kayo at nag-study kayo sa Canada. So, usually, ang average kasi ng cost ng tuition is around 12 to 15 uh, Canadian, 15,000 Canadian dollars. So, medyo mabigat po yun. So, kung sa tuition pa lang, kung mag-aaral kayo ng 2 or 1 years, kailangan meron ka na at least na 500 to 800,000 or at least 1 million for tuition pa lang. Kasi po, yung 1 million na yun is like ka approximate na kakailanganin mo for your expenses to studies. Studies alone. Wala pa ibang expenses like household expenses, other remittance expenses that is apart from what you will spend kapag nasa Canada na po kayo. So, once you assess your financial capability, you should, um, ano ba yun? It means, are you ready to live in Canada and continue to, to stay on your same lifestyle in the Philippines when you're to Canada? So, you have to think twice because when you live in Canada, you might, uh, the, the living, uh, the lifestyle that you have in the Philippines or in other country, before you come to Canada is totally different. So, tanong mo po yung sarili mo. Ready ka ba na magtrabaho na hindi ka gaya na trabaho mo sa ibang bansa or sa Pilipinas? Willing ka ba mag-accept ng, traba ng trabaho na ang bayad is lower than you are receiving sa Pilipinas or sa ibang bansa? Yun po. Dapat mentally prepared and emotionally prepared when you come here. Kasi ang trabaho po sa mga part-time student, usually ang available uh, work is usually uh, hospitality, restaurant, fast foods, cleaning, so, and other skilled jobs, labor jobs, para sa mga lalaki or technical jobs. So, ready ba po kayo para doon? If not, pag-isipan niyo po mabuti. Kailangan talaga maging prepared financially kung hindi po kayo handa magtrabaho sa mga ganong klaseng field. And second, um, are you prepared to pay your tuition fee on time? Kasi usually po, ang payment ng tuition fee is like every semester or like every four months. So, ang bilis lang po kasi ng ano eh, ng first semester or kapag nag-aral ka sa Canada for one year, it will be divided into two, two semesters or sometimes three semesters or tri-semester. So, it depends kung ano po yung program nyo. Hashtag Miles Adventure in the comment section for your questions or requests. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. So, guys, take note of the cost living in Canada. Cost living in Canada is like it's it's really expensive especially if we are in toronto so right now i'm in toronto so what i can share with you is your actual experience when it comes to finances and earning here in toronto 
So I was working in Tim Hortons and I'm receiving, I'm working for 20 hours, minimum 20 hours per week. Sometimes they will give me only 15 to 18 hours, so it's sometimes less. You cannot work more than that because it's not allowed. It's illegal to work more than 20 hours, otherwise immigration will will come back to you and you know you will have some issues with your work permit so if you find a job for 20 hours the your income would be only enough to sustain your household expenses household expenses is like for room rent hydro and util your utilities such as electricity and water uh, transportation and for food allowance if you're you have a family back home and you still need to send them money then it would be it it is not enough so you have to find another job so and another job i'll discuss it later how you can find it so according to numbeo.com a single person estimated the cost is 1000 or 1109 canadian dollars if you will work for 20 hours per week so that will be 280 cut in for 200 per week and your earning would be like around 1120 cut but the tax uh, less tax pa. so but if you deduct mo pa yung tax so maybe you will have like around less than 1000 per in every four weeks kasi ang payment ang salary po dito is usually bi-weekly or per week then um, home, ang estimated home cost sharing po ah, sharing basis dito sa Toronto is average of 600 to 700 patas so usually 650 Okay, maganda na po yun with hydro, including hydro and uh, electricity and water. They call it hydro here, yung water and electricity. Yung food expenses, syempre depende po yun sa lifestyle. No? Kung kailangan magtipid, mag-a-adjust po talaga kayo. Transportation, yung uh, post-grad, uh, tiyatawag, and they're giving like 128 per month per students, post-graduate students. Kailangan lang po kumuha ng ID sa TTC or the transportation uh, transit transportation dito sa Toronto pero kailangan pa rin pong i-apply yun and may biting po around mga $5 something with tax syempre, lahat naman po dito may tax kasi may tax po dito na 13% in any services sa Toronto lang po yun um, disclaimer lang po, lahat po na sinasabi ko is only yung ano po yung experience ko dito and based lang po sa location ko since uh, yun lang po yung sure ako na, na pwede kong i-share na totoo and kung meron po kayong question i-type nyo lang po sa comment sasagutin ko po sa next video so ayun po uh, yung 20 hours per week na allowed ng government is tinatawag po yun para na o off campus yun po yung mga jobs na pwede kayo mag work outside the your university any place sa uh, area kung saan ka nag nag-aaral so apart from 20 hours meron din po kayong option mag-study sa uh, mag-work sa tinatawag na uh, mag-work sa loob ng campus or ng university nyo or ng registered institution nyo kapag ka full-time student. So, ano po ba yung uh, on-campus jobs na tinatawag? So, apart dun sa 20 hours na allowed tayo mag-work, pwede ka rin po mag-work sa uh, on-campus job employment na tinatawag. According to um, www.canada.ca that's the website for the immigration um, on campus is defined as an employment facilities which the which is in the boundaries of the campus so campus is yung po yung registered um, institution kung saan po kayo mag-aaral pero as 
full-time students. Hindi po kasi allowed mag-work. Um, I mean, in, may different rules po kasi kapag part-time studies ang kinukuha niyo. So, yun po yun. And, guys, if you really need to know more um, uh, information about your plan to study in Canada, please visit www.canada.ca kasi reliable po ang source talaga na yun dahil sa government po yun. Uh, mag-ingat po tayo sa pag-connect uh, sa iba't ibang grupo or agency na nag offer ng iba't ibang services. Pag-aralan nyo po muna mabuti. Mag-research po muna bago maglabas ng kahit uh, you know, your hard-earned money para mag-consult sa iba't ibang agency. I, but I know, nag-consult din po ako si agency but before ako nag-pursue sa kanila. Marami na po akong marami po kong kakilala na nakaalis din kaya nag-decide ako na ituloy yung plan ko. So, para po sa inyo na nagpa-plano pa lang, advice lang po yon na mag-research po tayo para din po yun sa inyo. And, um, according to the immigration site, the, st the students are allowed to work on the campus on the campus of the educational institution at which they are registered in full-time studies. So, kung kunwari po, naka-enroll, like me, nag-study po ako sa Seneca College, then, nakapagtrabaho din po ako sa, uh, sa on-campus jobs inside my campus, which is in Seneca, Newnham. So, uh, nakakuha po ako ng part-time doon through volunteering. Nung may nakilala ako ng mga coordinators and naging active ako sa campus namin, Nagkaroon po ako ng chance na makatrabaho. Hindi rin po kasi madali maghanap ng campus, on-campus jobs or part-time jobs. Dahil, ano po, uh, kailangan niyo po i-build yung network niyo. Sa Canada po kasi hindi basta-basta na kahit na natapos ka ng MBA or BA, hindi po kaagad ka agad na makakahanap ng ganun related professions. Ang una, una po natin gagawin is makipag- uh, mag-volunteer po tayo sa mga iba't ibang organizations or iba't ibang departments sa schools. Maging active and then until you met the right uh, person na makakatulong sa'yo to find a good job or part-time job inside the school or inside the campus. So, yun po yung nangyari sa akin. So, although I think halos one year lang po ako naka-experience naka sa mga pagtrabaho sa campus kasi yun nga, kailangan i-build ang network through volunteering sa mga iba't ibang events sa school. And then, when they come to know na active ka sa school, saka po ako nabigyan ng chance makapag-work sa uh, bilang isang student ambassador sa Seneca College. So, salamat po sa pagtapos sa aking video. So, sana po, supportahan niyo po ang next uh, video na related pa rin po sa ating topic para matulungan po kayo na makapag-aral sa Canada in the future. So, don't forget to leave a comment on the comment section. Hashtag Miles Adventures so I can answer your question po kung alam ko po ang sagot. Or mabigyan ko kayo ng idea kung ano po yung gusto nyong malaman. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell notifications para maging updated po kayo sa next videos natin. Salamat po. God bless everyone.